Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee and the Word. Oh, that was my first sip there. Good stuff. All right. Like I said, welcome back. It is the first day of Advent. It's November 29th. Uh, so ad- the Advent season is on us. And uh, so as we get ready and look forward to Christmas, um, let's see. Uh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the psalmody this morning. We're in Psalm 118, verses 19 through 24. So, here we go. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall never enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament rest lesson this morning. Uh, It's in Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 25. Okay. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you, (sighs) now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns shall grow up. And I will command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. Woe to those who join house to house, who add field to field, until there is no more room, and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. The Lord of hosts has sworn in my hearing, Surely many houses shall be desolate, large and beautiful houses, without inhabitant. For ten acres of vineyard shall shall yield but one bath, (coughs) and a homer of seed shall yield but one epaph. Woe to those who rise early in the morning, that they may run after strong drink, who tarry late into the evening, as wine inflames them. They have lyre and harp, tambourine and flute, and wine at their feast, but they do not regard the deeds of the Lord, or see the work of his hands. Therefore my people go into exile for lack of knowledge. Their honored men go hungry, and their multitude is parched with thirst. Therefore Sheol has enlarged its appetite and opened its mouth beyond measure. And the nobility of Jerusalem and her multitude will go down. Her revelers and he who exalts in her. Man is humbled and each one is brought low. And the eyes of the haughty are brought low. But the Lord of hosts is exalted in justice. And the holy holy God shows himself holy in righteousness. Then shall the lambs graze at their graze in their pasture, and the nomads shall eat among the ruins of the rich. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood, who draw sin as the cart ropes, who say, Let him be quick, let him spin, speed his work, that we may see it. Let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near, and let it come, that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light, and light for darkness, 
who put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes, and shrewd in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine, and valiant men in mixing strong drink, who acquit, who acquit the guilty for a bribe, and deprive the innocent of his right. Therefore, as the tongue of fire devours the stubble, uh, and as the dry grass drink sinks down into flame, so their root will be as rottenness, and their blossom go up like dust. For they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts, and have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was kindled against his people, and he stretched out his hand against them and struck them, and the mountains quaked, and their corpses were were as refuge in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger has not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. Alright. Alright, the New Testament uh, this morning, we're in First Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. So here we go. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of, out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. And this is the word of the Lord. Get a little coffee here. I'm going to have this coffee, and then I'm going to go downstairs and have some more coffee. <laughs> the hymn ditty this morning is Christ Our Cornerstone. So here we go. Christ is our cornerstone. On Him alone we build. With His true saints alone, the courts of heaven are filled. On His great love, our hopes we place of present grace. Ugh. Our hopes we place of present grace and joys above. <clears throat> All right, let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. Grant that we may be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of, of the Christian church, so that with all believers in your promise, we would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a little paragraph here about Noah. I mean, I'm sure we all know who Noah is, but there's an interesting paragraph, and I want to share that with you. Noah, the son of Lamech, was instructed by God to build an ark in which his family would find security from the destructive waters of a devastating flood that God warned would come. Noah built the ark, and the rains descended. The entire earth was flooded, destroying every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animals. After the flood water subsided, 
the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. When Noah determined it was safe, and God confirmed it, Noah, his family, and all the animals disembarked. Then Noah built an altar and offered a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God for having saved his family from destruction. A rainbow in the sky, in the sky was declared by God to be a sign of his promise that never again would a similar flood destroy the entire earth. Noah is remembered and honored for his obedience, believing that God would do what he said he would. And you know what? We can all believe that. So, anyway, I'm going to be making it to church this morning, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, my wife and kids, they still, they're just a little nervous, and, and, and I, yeah, I get it. Uh, but anyway, uh, so maybe I'll see you there. So anyway, y'all have a fantastic day. It looks like the rain's going to clear out, and it's going to be a nice day. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we will see you tomorrow on Coffee and the Word. Bye-bye. God bless.